स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया morning uh, to lecture number 8 in the lecture series of uh, introduction to interaction design so in the last lecture we saw the role of cognition and how understanding the human cognition how it processes information how it retrieves information is very important for designers to design uh, better interactive applications for human use so in today's uh, lecture we will see the role of social interaction that how the social interaction is important and this whole fabric of social interaction is really important to understand for designers so that we are able to integrate some of those important factors that govern how we interact with other people and because technology is you know now uh, entering into our life in such a way that it has really enmeshed itself wherein we now also talk with people who are much away from us so the way we interact with people or how our social connections are designed or how we operate within those it will also govern that how do we design better uh, interactions so humans are you know social uh, animals and we like to work together learn together we live together we don't like to be isolated and recently in the past couple of decades a lot of technologies have been developed which specifically help uh, enable us to persist in a social uh, realm wherein we are not even physically probably present there so this includes uh, smartphones that almost everyone of us uh, has now video chat social uh, medias gaming messaging all of these uh, really uh, help us involve get involved in the social you know practice even when we may be virtually present there now face to face conversations are uh, central to us in even in current situation in many of these uh, uh, areas of life like going to the office or you know going to a lecture class but the role of social media has uh, really increased and people spend from minutes to uh, hours on a uh, platform like that so the minute we wake up till the time we go to bed we some of us maybe even first thing we do is pick out our phone and check our emails or messages that we have received maybe while we were sleeping to catch up on all the activities or to check the news and other things so so it gets very important that how uh, do we integrate these face to face conversations in the digital Uh, interactions now talking is something that comes very effortlessly to us because uh, since the time we were a child we have been talked to and we reply so we know how the uh, whole talking mechanism works but when we have to uh, hold a conversation for an elongated period of time so it requires certain skills and some collaborative techniques that will ensure that this uh, conversation you know is meaningful and something is gained from it so there are researches that have been conducted wherein people have found that especially nowadays youngsters because when we were younger the only entertainment probably available to us was doordarshan but now children have so many options that even a 2 year old can operate a mobile uh, very easily as compared to maybe their grandfather or father so researches have been conducted to see that how you know this uh, this enmeshing of technology in our lives how does it affect over a longer period of study so what some of the studies indicate is that when somebody is engaging in these um technologies for far too long and we see that all around us in homes people are in the same room but they are either on a laptop or phone or some other device watching tv even in restaurants uh, where people go for us you know a social sort of a gathering that is you know one of the main purposes of eating out but there also people will just whip out their phones and they are checking something or the other so it has shown that how it 
sort of disconnects one from you know other people how it kills that you know social uh, socialness or the feeling of being for the other person and that also affects the empathy that we feel for other people because empathy is generated only when we are interacting with people we are talking with them uh, sharing our problems and then we feel the empathy so which is a very important point in the design thinking process that we had seen in the earlier lecture so but technology is not going away anywhere all these medias are also not going anywhere so then it becomes very important for designers that how do we integrate these technologies these interfaces with this learning from how people interact in a social situation because already there are so many uh, ways that you know we get feedback so the uh, technology or the application is mimicking almost uh, or at least the attempt is there for it to respond to us just like a normal person does so how can we even improve it further so that we don't miss out on this empathy and many other things that uh, probably will also be affected so that's a big responsibility for uh, the designers in that respect so a typical face to face conversation when we are talking with somebody is has three uh, uh, you know points so one is uh, the beginning of the conversation then how it progresses and at the end how it uh, finishes so this is very important uh, to understand that how it begins ha what happens in the middle and how it ends because we are now designing a lot of uh, uh, you know chat boxes uh, voice assistants and many other tools and uh, it should uh, understand the face to face conversation and then try to mimic that so for example we can see a, a, a snippet of a conversation wherein there are three people and the first says hey the second response third response and then how uh, all three are uh, responding and it is like a seamless uh, conversation so now when we are talking on the phone okay so the norm the social uh, norm is that we will start with a greeting so if i need somebody's phone number i will probably uh, uh, call and the person would say hello and then i would say hello how are you and then then uh, we'll i'll ask for the phone number and maybe while talking i'll also ask few other things and vice versa and then we'll end with a greeting okay take care bye but when we are chatting online whether through whatsapp or through uh, any other messenger for example then the uh, the greetings how we greet changes so then i will probably be very uh, you know point blank and say hi uh vishal for example do you have uh, rachit's phone number so he will respond maybe he'll just uh, uh, you know send the uh, the card and i will say thanks so you can see that how in these two mediums the uh, the beginning and the middle and the end of the conversation is so different so there are certain rules or we can say there are certain conversational mechanisms that help us coordinate our talk with the other person and it also tells us when to start and when to stop so these are sort of like cues which like in a theater there is a certain dialogue after which the other person knows that now it's my turn to go on the stage similarly when we are conversing then also we have these uh, cues which could be verbal or which could be uh, physical as well but there are certain uh, rules also that apply here so generally when one person is talking and this is uh, in a say a physical setting so one person starts uh, talking and then once he has given his views on it so he, he will probably ask the other person that okay you can now share your views on this so the second person has a choice that he can start discussing his thoughts on it or he may not respond so once the second thing happens where is he is not responding or he is just maybe sh giving some physical cue by shrugging or uh, shaking his head then the, the first person will either ask the another person to respond or he will continue you know he will he'll take he will pick up the conversation and he will add uh, something there to, to make the conversation go further on now uh, certain verbal cues also indicate that when somebody 
will be concluding their talk or how long will they be talking look for for example when we are in uh, sitting through a speech and there is a guest and they say i'll take just 2 minutes of your time so we sort of time that okay 2 minutes may be 5 but it will not be half an hour so so these cues help us also organize our uh, what probably we will be asked to say or uh, you know other activities that we may have planned so for example the verbal a uh, cue can be uh, one may say i want to talk about two important things so we know that we have to look for two things two important points that this person will mention or they may say they may end that okay this is all i want to say or okay that's all from my side so these are some verbal cues which tells somebody that okay now my turn may come or uh, okay or for the presenter okay i'll have to ask somebody else from the audience to join in and in the physical cues can be uh, walking away or uh, you know some facial uh, gesture or some physical body indication which tells that uh, okay i am uh, i'm done uh, with this so how does that work when it is a digital uh, medium so we have seen during covid when we were teaching learning online so uh, how the prompting happened how the teacher would ask the student to speak and then how much time it would take for the student to respond so there were many other challenges sometimes something did not work or maybe you know we could not see because the camera was not on so we could not get a physical cue so uh, so there are challenges when we are working on a digital uh, platform but how do we make it as seamless as a physical conversation is something that uh, we need to see then this another thing which is the Uh, adjacency pairs, so adjacent uh, pairs next to uh, each other. So which means that conversational turn taking. So wherein the conversation will be uh, started and then somebody else will uh, take over it. So these are so there are two utterances. So utterance as an uttering or uh, utter or speak, and two people uh, one after the other. So here is couple of examples. So wherein call or uh, beckon so whether whether response will come so i will say uh, waiter and then the person will say yes sir yes ma'am uh, complaint where i am you know uh, complaining something and then they will provide me with a solution for it so uh, i would say it's uh, you know awfully cold here and they will say oh, okay sorry let me uh, close the window then the offer so where i'm offering something and the other person may accept it or they may uh, reject it so i may say to a friend you know would you like to visit the museum with me this evening and uh, either they will say oh i'll i'll really like to uh, join you or they may say that no i i'm busy i can't today and the other is a compliment where i may be complimenting somebody and they may have the choice to say that oh thank you or they or they may say that uh, they may not take the compliment very graciously so they may refuse it that oh it's you know uh, it's not really how it uh, you know so was supposed to turn out so there are this is how the natural conversation uh, happens and how one speaks out something and how the other uh, replies to it it gets the conversation going now sometimes uh, what happens is that these uh, adjacency pairs they get uh, enmeshed into each other so and there may be times when there may be a, a longer time that will be taken for a response because people generally are not aware of following conversational mechanisms and would be hard pressed to articulate how they can carry on a con- on a conversation so it's not a rule that people will follow such rules so they i mean humans being humans they probably will cut into a conversation they may start talking about something else altogether right so it is not that these uh, uh, rules will be followed they are very organic when it comes to a one on one conversation so for example uh, in this uh, example we can see that uh, i suggest that would you like to visit the museum with me this evening but my friend probably is you know observing some uh, nearby shop and they say oh what a nice uh, display uh, window and uh, so of course now i am focusing on the second part of it and i say oh yes it's actually uh, quite nice 
but now they are responding to the first question I asked and then they say that oh yes I would like to go with you or sorry I cannot right. So, we do not uh, follow uh, rules that one question will lead to its answer and then the next question will ask and so that is uh, uh, you know how the natural or organic flow of the conversation is. But sometimes there may be cases where there is a question has been asked and there is an awkward silence. So, that means the conversation has had a breakdown. So, breakdowns in conversations they arise when someone says something that is ambiguous, it is not very clear and then the participant may be misinterpreted as something else and in the situation the participant will try to you know overcome this uh, breakdown and uh, they will use certain kind of repair mechanisms to uh, undo this damage that was caused. So, we can see from this uh, little example here that one person is asking for directions. So, he says that you know how do I reach the bus stand. So, the other person uh, says that you know take a right and gives a direction next to Ganesh temple take a second right. So, but the first person of course, being new does not know the uh, area very well. So, he says ok right from Shiv Mandir. So, the first person uh, the second person then responds that no, no not that road that is a wrong road second right second right. So, we can see that there was some breakdown because the first person did not really understand the directions very well. So, the uh, information was not processed properly and uh, this person may have uh, you know gone on in some uh, wrong direction, but then the second person was responding to his query repaired by giving uh, a verbal uh, feedback and maybe also you know a physical feed, uh, feedback of shaking his head on and pointing with his hand towards the right direction. So, now in a in a conversation breakdown when that happens then how do we uh, repair it. So, in especially in two areas for example, how to point out a mistake. So, I have made some uh, mistake maybe I have sent a mail and I have forgotten to attach uh, one attachment in that email ok. How one will uh, re uh, respond? So, if I now think of it in a physical scenario wherein I am supposed to give somebody a physical file they and they may say that you forgot to give me the file, you came to give me the file, you did not give it to me ok. So, that is how they will remind me and I will say oh yeah sorry here it is, but if I am sending a mail and I for forget to attach a file then how will they say they will not uh, uh, you know speak the way they were in a physical setting. So, they may have to remind me politely that I have received your mail however, you know you have forgotten to attach. So, the the way they respond will be different or when I need some information from somebody how do I remind them from a rep for a reply. So, uh, in a physical way I may uh, sort of nag somebody uh, that please send uh, you have not sent me still, but when I am using a digital platform mail message then I have to know that how do I uh, do not come across as very maybe aggressive or too pushy. Now, uh, remote conversations as we know are becoming increasingly popular in uh, recent years especially due to the technology and uh, uh, also the uh, rise in remote work and especially after uh, COVID we have seen people are working from home quite a bit. So, this helps people to communicate and uh, collaborate that is what we want because in a physical setting it is always a teamwork in whatever field we go there will be several people working uh, together on a project and we want to maintain this also when we are uh, working remotely that how can we communicate collaborate not only from our organization, but also maybe from some other country because now uh, all the areas are becoming interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary and uh, we can have international collaborators. So, how do we do it? So, now it is uh, becoming uh, specifically important because it allows us to communicate and they all have their own unique features and benefits and depending on our requirement we can choose which mode we want to use. So, for example, for this particular task what is the best way email instant message. Now, if I am in a rush I want uh, some information quickly 
then maybe sending email will not be the right choice because it will the person may not be sitting uh, on their computer or they may not check their email that frequently but rather i can uh, you know send a message or i can also call uh, so that i get a uh, urgent uh, response or if we are uh, collaborating we are working on a project together then maybe the best way would be to have a video conference where we can also share our screen and we can you know discuss our way forward on that screen so co presence is basically and we can say an extension of our uh, uh, telepresence a uh, telepresence nowadays is very it's becoming very popular wherein people who may not be there but they are present uh, in another uh, mode so if you you know in hospitals it is becoming increasingly popular wherein patients who are not diagnosed or who are not checked by maybe a real doctor but he is uh, present and he is asking the patient about the symptoms sometimes even children who are uh, sick cannot go to school so they have these robots with uh, the you know screen having the face of the child and then he can the, the robot can be operated so that he is able to listen to the lecture teacher in the class even though he is sitting at home but he feels like he is physically there and other children also feel his uh, presence we also saw this uh, in television we see this often in many of these sitcoms like this uh, sheldon uh, cooper who you know went around as a robot so we see all these examples around us and it is becoming increasingly uh, popular now co presence is also uh, becoming very uh, important and uh, because a lot of technologies are enabling people to use them together as a group so the motivation for this is to enable uh, co-located groups to collaborate more effectively when we are working or learning or socializing so we can maybe recall that there are these smart uh, boards there are these surfaces even teams is this uh, microsoft platform which allows people to put up their work create assignments review the work work as a team even figma the software number of people can work on it on the same file people can work they can modify it you can also uh, control that who accesses accesses what in that file so there are all these options are available so that people are not working on the same work in their different uh, silos and then they have to put it all together rather one place where whoever gets the time goes on the platform adds his or her bit and then the other person adds their part of the work so it makes the whole system more efficient so when people are working closely uh, together so they talk to each other they are you know giving commands and they are letting people know that how are they progressing in that tasks so for example if i have to shift the sofa to another wall in my another corner in my house then i will be instructing the person that little left little right yes yes okay on uh, put it down or if we are putting a poster that it's straight or not straight so we are giving these verbal instructions okay so and along with these verbal instructions there are also non verbal instructions which are given by our a uh, physical uh, body so we will maybe nod our head or shake our head or do some other you know give some other cue so that the person knows that whether they are in the right direction of what is expected of them or no so co presence has another aspect which is awareness so when we are for example say at a social uh, gathering, uh, gathering and we are maybe talking with uh, somebody but at the same time you are also Uh, through a peripheral uh, vision we are also aware that what is that group of people doing or what is the other uh, group of people doing so we know that how is somebody's mood getting little uh, you know somebody is getting upset or uh, somebody is uh, sitting alone in a corner so we uh, while we are uh, uh, talking conversing or and we are responding but we are still you know aware of our uh, surroundings so this is a uh, quite uh, similar that how this uh, uh, you know how a person's ability can be maintained and updated so that they know that what is going on in the physical and the uh, social uh, context
Now, these learnings from uh, co-presence that how uh, people like to collaborate, how they like to work together, how they have that peripheral uh, understanding of uh, uh, you know activities going on around around them. So, this information or this knowledge is very useful when we are uh, designing interactions for shareable interfaces. So, one assumption here is that shareable interfaces provide more opportunities for flexible kinds of collaboration compared with single user uh, interfaces. So, with the help of fingers uh, making the screen uh, like zooming in, zooming out, using pens, annotating with different colored uh, pens. So, uh, these help in sharing of the idea and also helps in developing the, the peripheral awareness, because we know that what the other person is uh, coming up uh, on the other side of the shareable uh, screen. And, uh, and then how do we include that or how do we take that work forward from there. So, the uh, shareable surfaces are also uh, considered to be more natural than other technologies, because people feel encouraged or they feel enticed to actually touch them and they do not feel uh, intimidated, because now they are working in a group. If uh, in a class for example, a teacher asks a student to go up to the board and uh, solve something. So, the person out of the class of 2030 will feel a little you know not that confident, because he may not do a good job on the board. So, that will lead to some kind of embarrassment, but if a teacher asks 5 students to come and attempt this on the board, then the level of embarrassment or the hesitance uh, would be little uh, less. So, the same thing uh, goes here in uh, shareable interfaces as well, that people feel more uh, encouraged to use them and of course, when they are encouraged, then the output is also uh, much improved. Now, so, social uh, engagement uh, refers to how people participate in uh, activities in the social group. Now, how do we take this uh, social engagement forward? How can we, you know, include certain groups maybe of the society who can also benefit uh, from this social engagement, maybe who are not currently feeling as engaged as they would like to, depending on many factors, socioeconomic level or the age factor or or maybe their uh, impairment or many other factors could be there. So, the, the, uh, one example of this is a particular website that uh, supports a pro uh, social behavior and it of does that by offering activities which are intended to uh, help others. So, there are many such you know uh, websites that do this. So, one example is where a website connects people who like to run. So, runners uh, with elderly people who are isolated. So, when they are out running, they will uh, on their way, they will stop and uh, chat with the elderly person, okay. uh, maybe have a small conversation or maybe they will help them out somehow, just maybe run back to the grocery store and bring some supplies for them. So, this helps both the parties, one person is uh, doing uh, his or her regular exercise but at the same time the other person is also benefiting from their presence. So, uh, like earlier I mentioned that how that empathy we are losing out on empathy if we are all the time on a device or we are multitasking or we are just uh, cluttering our brain with a lot of information, then some of these uh, social engagements can actually when they are embedded into these systems, they can help decrease the damage that it may cause. So, we have to find these innovative ways in which the society can also benefit. So, what we can take away from this is that um, talk and the way it is managed, how we talk and the way we manage it is integral to social aspect in interaction design and how we can bring this into the interfaces. So, how technologies that are developed uh, can help people remotely and how can we even uh, improve them further. During COVID, when we were using certain platforms, we came across some glitch or the other, something or the other was not as we would have liked. So, what are those uh, problem areas? How can we work on them further? Already these, you know, these online uh, uh, platforms have made several improvements already, but more is required. Then keeping our awareness of what others are doing and letting others know what we are doing is important, because we have to maintain that social bonding and 
it is especially important when we are uh, collaborating with others then how to involve into socializing and collaborating with others so that everyone benefits from this uh, teamwork and how the social media has changed our lives majorly and how people are now changing the way they manage their life and uh, what is how can we look at the whole social fabric of our lives and how it can be integrated into the interfaces so that we can almost mimic or replicate as we interact naturally in a physical setting so we will end the lecture here today and in the next lecture we will see the role of uh, emotion because we have seen that how we all have a social responsibility as well as a social uh, structure in our daily lives and how emotion is also a very important aspect of it and how the designers can understand the emotional workings of uh, humans and that will help them to connect with them better and design better interfaces. So, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.